Uh, firstly, thank you so much for uh, for joining us and talking to us today. Thank you so much. So fresh off the WPL, Anjum, the Women's Premier League, how would you gauge the success of the inaugural season on a scale of 1 to 10? Well, it's closer to 10 only, I think. Uh, the success, obviously, is it closer to 10. So, yes, yeah, that's exactly how I'm going to be seeing it. Fantastic. Uh, so, you know, at the end of it, what were some of the, the standout moments for you and maybe milestones uh, that were reached uh, in this inaugural season? Milestones and all, I don't think they were set because this is a very new format. It's a very uh, new tournament to say that we had these milestones. I think everyone just went with the flow, the way uh, the tournament progressed and the way it was received. That's how we saw it. Fair enough. Uh, and, and you know, you do think that the WPL uh, will have as dramatic an effect on women's cricket uh, as the Indian Premier League has had on uh, the men's game? Look, we've just had one season. So mm -hmm. that season was a relative success and a, and a nice, uh, you know, uh, outing for the tournament, for everyone else. So I don't know how it impacts IPL, whether it does impact IPL or not, because IPL is a very old product it's not a it's not in its first season it's a very well established product so uh i'm not quite sure i think the time will only tell whether there it, there is an impact there isn't an impact and how how it is if there is any well we're going to be hopeful uh you know because we've seen the trajectory of the of the I, of the ipl and what it did for men's cricket uh, both domestic and international. So I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for our women. But the first season, like you said, it's, you know, it's it's new ground, it's fresh territory, everyone's sort of feeling their way around, uh, you know. Um, and I think it's very important in making the sport gender neutral. Uh, were there moments when your male counterparts kind of struggled with the words, you know, like changing batsman to batter and stuff? No, I think uh, there is no struggle because ICC has uh, obviously mandated it to be uh, preferably, I won't say mandated like that, but yes, yeah, preferable that you address a batter rather than a bat batsman or a batswoman. And uh, there are some who have obviously got it more fluently. The others are in the process of getting it there, especially those who um, cover the women and the men's game. So I, again, I, I don't see it as a concern. It's just something of an adaptation. So that's where it is going. Okay, good to know. Uh, who, were your, who were the standout players for you, Anjum, in, in this tournament, uh, both domestic and, and international? Internationally, obviously, Natalie Sivabrant uh, was, was exceptional, I think, and, and she lived up to the expectation that has always been there. Uh, you know, and, and, and she is an outstanding player. We've known that as well. Um, Ailey Matthews did really well. Sophie Devine in patches did well. Elise Perry. So all these international players lived up to their billing, of course. For the domestic players, uh, I thought the uh, the Indian domestic talent was was very good. Whether it was a Sai Kai Shark or whether it was a Yastika Bhatia, Yastika first place for India as well. Mm -hmm. But for all these players, there was a nice outing to uh, you know come up shoulders with the international players and 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 be counted as well in 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 this kind of league where there are international stars and it's a franchise game and everything. So, you know, it, 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 I'm sure it's a very nice and a healthy learning curve for all these players. Yeah. Uh, on, on a personal note, on a personal note, this has been quite a journey for you, Anjum, to see women's cricket, you know, get a global stage now and then draw, I'm told, like 50,000 spectators to the stadium for the final. Uh, give us a sense of, of where it was when you sort of started in the game and where women's cricket is today. I mean, it's it's. There's no comparison uh, because obviously the entire uh, um, segment has only shifted. It's not even uh, anything to compare where I started from or even where my seniors started from uh, to where it is today. I don't think anyone uh, is is not surprised with the kind of a turnout that we've had uh, for most of the matches in the Tata WPL or. Uh, or or the or the you know following that the game has received in the past month, it's been obviously growing very uh, consciously and very constantly as well. Um, but of course, the kind of response that we saw in this tournament was uh, was very nice. And for all those people who've been a part of the game before this era, 
you know for everyone to be there in the in the ground where people are uh, cheering for a player or for a team and they're just there if it's like a near sell out crowd in the stadiums it it's very overwhelming of course yeah i've been reading uh, you know reports about uh, the international players as well and they've never experienced something uh, you know to this magnitude in women's cricket uh, we have you know we have to talk about the money the kaching kaching reaching the you know the wpl and how it might help to transform i think the level of women's cricket locally and internationally your comments i uh, so money always is a is a great uh, you know motivator as well and when you get paid for uh your your hard work and and what you obviously want to achieve it's 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 like a salary any any corporate employee also gets to work um you know every day or or or, or entire 12 months of a year you get paid a remuneration and it's for a player as well so the only thing is that a that you don't you don't go and play 365 days a year but you obviously go to work more than 320 or 330 days a year so it's it's an it's a very different uh, setup but i feel it's it's very nice the way the players have uh, started on this uh, journey as well where they are ably remunerated sometimes good sometimes ordinary it can become much better as well but it's it's a wonderful start from where as i said from where i started or even before even when i had not even picked up the bat people who were playing the game prior to me so their contribution their journey uh, to this point is obviously we can really say it's it's been a it's quite a journey yeah uh so women's cricket up until now like like you mentioned you know has had few i think earning opportunities and a minimal test program compared to men uh so hopefully this is these are signs that the things are changing going forward not just for uh you know women in cricket but women in sport across the, the country uh your comments as in the sport going across the country as in more women being involved in sport and you know being paid accordingly uh, handsomely or just being paid even and so nice as i mentioned it's obviously good that uh, you're getting paid to uh, you know perform to the optimum level and and you're getting remunerated because at the end of the day you put all your hard work time effort into it so you can't be doing it for free and you can do it only for free till the time it's your passion if it has to become a profession then you have to be paid for it and and, and that's what you're expecting as well so yeah, yeah. yeah uh, you know at, at the start of the tournament uh, you said you were a bit disappointed that most uh, franchises opted for foreign players in leadership roles uh, you know uh, your comments to that so it's an indian premier league or a women's premier league uh, then obviously you would want more indians to get the exposure of leading teams captaining teams i also understand that there are not five quality captains to be un- leading their franchise teams but even if there is an opportunity of putting an indian player as a captain uh, ahead of someone so there there was no comparison that a meg lanning from australia would not be leading a franchise team and and that's not nobody's going to think like that as well but if there was an opportunity of making an indian player a captain and having a foreign player who's probably better than her doesn't uh, have to be uh, at be, uh, so same or less even if she's better than her I, I, you know just that exposure of grooming an indian player as well um, in in a leadership role so that's where i thought it wasn't that i don't uh, expect a foreign player to be captaining the side it's not about that it was about an indian player getting more of an opportunity of leading a side and honing their skills in that field as well here's a fun question if you had to create your own cricketing 11 from both past and present uh, women players what would your team consist of oh that will take uh, two days to team <laughs> i'm sorry i won't be able to do justice to this and i'm not even sure that i can make it in two days but it doesn't come off and you can't count you can't count so many names of contributed to the indian sport uh, just because a wpl tournament has been a successful one uh, you can't take away those contributions right what would you like to see change for women's cricket going forward anjum i think it's already changed uh ch- going forward is, is something that will let's sustain to what the change we've already seen in the sport mm-hmm. i i'm not looking at any change immediately from what it's what we've just witnessed in the last 30 days 
I think even if you're able to make this better and sustain this and, and you know, uh, get more eyeballs in what we've got uh, in this edition, more competitive, that's that's probably the biggest thing that uh, I've too many years around. Yeah. All right. What is uh, Anjum doing a downtime? There isn't any. <laughs> How can you not? <laughs> So, uh, so here's a, the thing. Really? Okay. So you're busy 24 7. Yeah. All and right. There's, there's no problem with it. I'm happy being working. I'm happy working. So sure, sure. Do you do you listen to music? Yeah, yeah that's of course. I listen to music. I sometimes get to watch movies. Yeah, of course I do all that. But as I said, that's the, for that you don't need downtime to listen to music. Music is is a part of life. It's always there. Yeah, entertaining. And uh, soothing as well. So, yeah. Of course. Uh, so, you know, as a motivational speaker, what would you like to say to uh, the women in sport or girls who are in school, are interested in sport, but maybe have the whole, you know, uh, the, the academic part of it weighing on them as well? What would you like to say to them today? I think sport is always a choice that you make. I'm watching a movie or at home uh, playing or, or, or having any downtime. I think sport is a is a choice. Um, and I feel that you ought to like uh, getting into any sport or doing physical activity, obviously stepping out of your comfort zone. And when I say stepping out of your comfort zone, it's not only just about going to the ground and running around. It's about, uh, you know, winning, losing, playing an individual sport or a team sport. It's, it's, it's just a very individual choice. And I feel that uh, it just gives you a completely different perspective to what you learn in the books. Sport just gives you all the practical experience of what the books put there in black and white. So right. there is no comparison. Obviously, sport is a massive teacher. Uh, sometimes you have, in academics, you have to read, learn, and practice it. Sport just puts you in a situation to react. And that's how you learn it. So you learn, unlearn, and you You'll, you'll see the all the practical experiences. You don't have to step out anywhere. You, sport provides you everything. So it's yeah. about uh, having their own uh, you know, decision to do it. I mean, it's not about playing for the national side all about it. It's also about playing the sport just for having a, a different perspective to a lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, you've you've led from the front uh, all through the all through these years when it comes to cricket as well. Uh, a little bit about your leadership skills and, uh, you know, maybe a, a hack or two, how to be a better leader. Again, I think it's very uh, relative term how you can be a better leader or how you can be. I think becoming a better leader is only uh, relative to what you are uh, leading as in a pack of people or a whether you're leading a team of um, on the field or off the field in the corporate world or in the sports world, that's one way. And the other part is uh, what are you uh, what are you dependent and not dependent on or at. So everything is very relative, and I feel becoming a better leader is more individual than uh, th than a team. It's not about a group. You only want to become a better leader because you want to have a better result going forward. Um, that, and, and providing that extra bit of uh, uh, while you were in a leadership role. So you can always become better. You can all better at the end of the day or at the start of the day, whatever it is, you have to obviously look at the results because if you're not able to get the required or the desired results, then you will not remain in that job. So as I say, it's all very relative and balancing out the nuances of it. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's challenging and yeah. it's good fun. Yeah. You know, from an infrastructure perspective, when it comes to supporting women in sport, uh, when it comes to our stadia, when it comes to travel, all of that, uh, what would you like to, you know, uh, what would you like to see change or what would you like to see get better? Um, I mean, infrastructure, I mean, sports wise, we have a decent infrastructure. Not that we don't have any, but I guess if we decide to make an infrastructure, we have to obviously uh, make it, uh, you know, more more open to everyone. It has to be not limited to a certain um, segment only. That's about making an infrastructure. Obviously, obviously, want to make an infrastructure, you spend a huge amount of it and then you make it very restrictive. So that balance of finding it uh, where the quality and quantity can meet together yeah. is, is obviously a very massive challenge. It's easier said than done, but it is quite, it's quite a challenge. So developing an infrastructure is not a problem. I don't think it's a problem in our country. 
maintaining it and utilizing is a challenge. So that's something that we can always look at. Right. Uh, and, and moving forward, uh, you know, uh, in terms of inclusivity, uh, is there more likely likelihood of us seeing mixed cricket, men and women together? I know that in, in, in the UK, they have a tournament in place, but somewhere in India, is there a possibility of us being able to see, you know, uh, men and women playing cricket Why do you together? want it? No, but, but why, why, why do you want the same team? Why I mean, not? I have, the, the, I, I see no reason why there should be a same team. I mean, what are we trying to achieve by having one same team? Is it fun cricket? Okay, fair enough. Let's go out and play fun cricket. Cricket, I feel is, Yes, sport is always uh, entertainment and sport is always fun. But at the end of the day, if you're making it as a career option, then the fun element can always happen. You can always have uh, uh, this kind of a, a, a team. But I don't, I mean, if, as I say again, if it's just for an uh, exhibition game, go ahead, play. Otherwise, why would you want to combine team? Why would you want a Virat Kohli and a Smriti Mandana to be batting in the same team? For what are we competing? Nothing. If you're doing... Uh, you know, social service, perfectly fine. Go ahead with it. <laughs> and I and I say this because, and and I say this because I've played cricket with all, all in a in a boys academy. So it's not that I've never played with the boys. I've played all my cricket, all my training, uh, junior cricket, senior cricket. Whenever I'm playing competitive cricket, I've always played with the boys. So I've played in a team where there are uh, ten boys and one girl, but that's a practice game. Mm. If you're talking about having one, I don't think you need it. At this point of time, you don't need it. Okay. So from that perspective, what about gender parity? Uh, sorry, pay parity when it comes to when it comes to genders. What about pay parity? What's your opinion on that? It's, no, it's, it's about, I think the girls are paid very uh, nicely in today's context. Uh, again, to the numbers, uh, to what we have just witnessed, to what the girls are being paid. You know, you can always keep complaining that we are not given the same amount of money. Uh, complaint is, again, a very individual thing. Whether you like to become a, a crybaby or you want to go out there and achieve a result. So, you get you get 10 rupees, you want 100. You get 100 rupees, you want 1,000. Fine, go achieve it. Go learn, uh, earn it. There's no there's no limit on that. Nobody has ever said, I, I've, I've never seen and I've never heard BCC ever mention that, oh, we will not give this to someone. They've always said, fine, go ahead, take it. And I'm not, I'm not the one who's been on the receiving end of the paychecks that the girls are getting right now. No, the girls have earned it and the mm -hmm. NL Cricket Board can afford it. So they're getting it. Cricket Australia has given that pay parity to their women players because Cricket Australia women's team has won World Cups. They're the one of the top teams. In fact, they, are, they have a better record than their men's team. Mm -hmm. Indian women's team have never won a World Cup. And we, for us, the, uh, you know, the, the Olympic medal is a Cricket World Cup for us. For cricketers, that is. Yeah. So I'm not trying to compare the Olympic medal to a cricket world cup, but I'm just saying for cricketers, the highest point is a cricket world cup championship mm -hmm. trophy. So all that, I I see no problem. I, I don't think so. I mean, as I said, people when I, even I had not started playing, they were not getting a penny. They didn't even get uniforms. Yeah. Here we are getting to change uniforms after every hour and a half. You know, that's the kind of uh, stuff that we get. Mm -hmm. So, and it will only become better. Probably this generation is seeing this. The next generation will come in and probably not even discuss clothing or remuneration. They'll be talking about, you know, how do we get 20 more, 30 more runs in one over. So, the discussion topics will change. So, I, I don't see it as a problem. I think it's become very good. Okay. Well, on that positive note, Gota, thank you so much for joining us. I know that you're driving someplace and you've taken time out to have a chat right. with us. Uh, always great to talk to you, Anjum. And, uh, you know, thank good you. luck going forward. Uh, what's what's the plans uh, for the for the rest of the year? Uh, there's quite a bit of cricket. Uh, I think the three months of the year have already gone. Another I know. few months will definitely go. Uh, then probably we can look at, uh, you know, some downtime when there is uh, there is no cricket happening. Yeah. Fortunately, we play a sport or we cover a sport which uh, happens when the world is on a holiday or when the when people are on a break. So yeah, so the yeah. The, the calendar works differently for us. But yeah. let's go ahead. I mean, it, it, it's it's a nice year. It's uh, going to be an eventful year. Fantastic. Thank you so much, and uh, we shall check in with you real soon. Thank you, Anjum. Ninety-four point three Radio One.